and uh, on the last turn we talked about general anatomy of sea star uh, what is oral side what is apural side what is present on the oral side what do you see on the apural side when i say oral i mean ventral in this case and when i say aboral that means the top or the dorsal and uh, the oral aboral axis is a bit compressed the oral aboral axis is compressed so here you see this is the figure that shows this part this is a oral part and this down part or under part is the oral part here and then what are the extensions present here uh, spines are there gills are there uh, the dermal branchi which are called as tube feet uh, you see so several structures are visible just from the above that without even opening the internal and exposing the uh, internal organs today we'll be talking about digestive system of uh, sea star uh, what peculiar aspects are associated with the digestive system of a sea star so before starting that let's just see what structures related to digestive system are uh, uh, visible here in this particular ppt so here you see a cardiac stomach here because we are uh, looking from the the dorsal side or aboral side some structures are under that for example cardiac stomach is present here below below this pyloric stomach here this one this is the cardiac stomach only part of it is shown here because only from three uh, arms the skin is removed here and then there is this part the pyloric stomach here you see this is the pyloric stomach and there are extensions of this pyloric stomach which uh, yeah which are extended into this pyloric duct and pyloric cecca these these pouches are present all through there are there is a pair of these uh, uh, these extensions and these pyloric cecca then uh, these branches these two branches they join and make the pyloric duct that opens into the pyloric stomach and then that uh, continues further and make a small intestine rectum rectal pouches rectal glands are there and the anus opening on the above side on the on the uh, aboral side here another structure which is visible here is metriporite which actually is part of water vascular system another thing that you see here is uh, podia several podia hundreds and thousands of podia that help in locomotion and uh, food capturing now in the next slide here you see the the dissected animal here and uh, some of the structures and organs have been removed to uh, to show that uh, what structures are included in the digestive system so here you see again you see pyloric stomach here because we are looking at the dorsal side or aboral side and the cardiac stomach here which is behind that which is behind that so this part this part here notched part is actually the cardiac stomach and here this star shaped part is the pyloric stomach here you see this is the pyloric stomach then since it is vertically extended so what structure next you see is a small intestine having these pouches here yeah these are the intestinal cecca or rectal cecca and a small rectum part uh, and that leads opens to the exterior through anus so this whole structure makes up the digestive system here see these glands are present in all five arms these pyloric glands or digestive glands are present in all five arms but the cardiac stomach the pyloric stomach main pyloric stomach intestine rectum this all these all these structures are located in the central disc only in the central part the central disc but arms have these digestive glands so they are very elaborate glands here you see these are the digestive glands here and they include these pyloric cecca then small ducts leading 
into duct of his own side, likewise on this side as well, and then these two ducts join, make up a common pyloric duct, which opens into pyloric stomach. So this is with the over. This is the overview of digestive system. Now we come to the text part. So of course there is a complete digestive tract in case of uh, C star, and uh, most of it is situated in the central disc, as we have seen in the previous PPT slide. Then it lies along the oral aboral surface. Oral aboral surface. This part. The main. tract is located in the oral aboral surface while the glands are distributed in all five arms like this and uh, it is short in length as because there is a flattening of body along this oral and aboral surface so accord in accordance with that the the alimentary canal is short the digestive tract is short it is not uh, um, extended or coiled or anything like that it is just present in this way in this way this way and it is a short um it is of short length now since it is complete that means uh, there would be the all the parts uh, uh, present here for example mouth esophagus stomach intestine and anus all parts are there it is a complete digestive tract let's see one by one Uh, where these parts are located but before that let's uh, have a look at the vertical section here so this part is showing the central disc this part is the central disc and only one arm is visible here let me uh, yeah magnify it a bit so i hope it is visible the um, the legends are also visible here so here you see this is the central disc part and this is the arm and this shows the vertical section vertical section showing only one arm there are five arms all around so for the sake of simplicity and better understanding only one part is shown here so here you see this is the complete digestive tract it is present on the oral aboral axis this is the oral part and this is the aboral part other structures are also visible in this they are part of other system for example this all is water vascular system this is water vascular system we are not concerned with that here at this point so here you see this is the mouth located centrally on the central disc on the oral side and here it leads into this pouch like structure so such pouches are there all around that in that means uh, see this extension is there in all the arms so it is like it's a flower petal like structure if you want to make an analogy so it is a flower petal like structure although it is a sac so it's a big sac then we have this part which is the pyloric stomach so of course there is connection between the cardiac and pyloric food moves here and here and uh, the digested food is absorbed here and the undigested food is that exits through the anus so in the vertical section you see mouth leading to cardiac stomach leading to pyloric stomach leading to a short intestine that ends in the anus here and the glands the associated glands are here the associated glands are here which open into this so here this one the pyloric duct open into this part right so there is movement of things in this direction as well as in this direction both way movement occurs uh, things like uh, the the food to digest the digested food the enzyme flow that that moves through this so coming back to the text part now since it is a complete digestive system we start with mouth here which is a pentagonal aperture it is surrounded by perioral membrane it is situated on the oral side as we have discussed it is situated in the center of the central disc part and uh, it is guarded by five groups of tubercles or oral spines that means uh, 
these oral spines uh, they lie in the five interradii interradii part is that that is present between the arms right so arm part is called as radii and between two radii there are interradii so these papillae or oral spines surround this mouth but it is distributed in five groups and uh, Uh, the muscles of body wall surrounding the mouth act as sphincters for opening and closing of mouth muscles of body wall if you recall body wall that it is invested with muscles let's see uh, if we can find this body wall part here this is the body wall vertical section and you see that it is invested with muscles that is circular muscle fibers and longitudinal muscle fibers so the contraction and relaxation of these muscles bring about the contraction and opening and closing of mouth so this is the structure we were talking about next is esophagus mouth leads into esophagus which is short and wide and extends vertically up to open into stomach here in this diagram we again want to uh, look at these structures uh, so here this part this purplish part is uh, the cardiac stomach purplish part is this cardiac stomach the esophagus is not visible and mouth is not visible on this because we are looking at this uh, animal from above so this part is showing uh, pyloric in the pink and cardiac in the Uh, in this uh, bluish uh, color then we have uh, this uh, intestine part shown in green and then opening uh, to the exterior so there is a mouth surrounded by spines then that leads to in, into short esophagus next part is stomach esophagus opens into stomach which is a spacious sac and occupies most of this central disc it is differentiated into two portions the large oral part is called cardiac stomach and a smaller aboral part is the pyloric stomach both are located in the central disc one above the other so the 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 bottom part is the cardiac part because it it is uh, on the uh, oral side and then the next above part is the Uh, pyloric stomach which is on the aboral side it is a smaller part uh, is the pyloric stomach and both are separated by a narrow constriction right as we have seen in this vertical section here so this is the cardiac part which is on the oral side then the pyloric part and a narrow constriction is there between these two parts see this is a relatively simple and easy to remember so both parts cardiac and pyloric they are separated by a constriction now regarding the cardiac part it is a large sac having five lobes along five radii as we have seen in some other slide that there are five lobes which oppose these uh, five radii which are which are uh, oriented along the five radii its walls are thin and muscular and highly folded so thin wall muscular and highly folded you see this is just like a deflated balloon if you inflate a balloon and then deflate it it's kind of that thin walled and a sac like thing and it is highly folded so the entire cardiac stomach can be inverted out through mouth during feeding it's like that if you if you if you imagine if we can just regurgitate our our evert our stomach through our mouth it is like that so instead of engulfing the food and taking it into stomach it kind of everts out its cardiac stomach out through the mouth right But, but but a complete alimentary canal is prevented from everting out due to the fact that there are attachment of this part with the body wall so only the cardiac part is everted out so entire cardiac stomach can be everted out through mouth during feeding 
it is brought about by contraction of body muscles the body muscles we have just seen in the section of body ball and the consequent pressure of the coelomic fluid so these two important forces they bring about this everting out of cardiac stomach through mouth then it can be retracted back it is retracted it is the retraction is brought about by five pairs of retractor muscles which connect the cardiac stomach with the ambulacral bridges of five arms so it is at this point these muscles are uh, they, uh, inserted and uh, contraction of these muscles bring whole thing back into the central disc only the cardiac part is diverted out the retractor muscles are composed mainly of connective tissue and muscle fiber and uh, they somewhat look like mesentries and that is why they are also called as mesentries or gastric ligaments so that bring about the retraction of cardiac stomach this cardiac stomach is glandular of course and it secretes mucus that helps in lubricating the passage then in this figure you see here you see this is the top part of a c star and it captures on the ventral side here it captures a bivalve ek muscle hai ya koi aur bivalve hai uh, oyster hai clam hai isko it, it is it has captured so this is the oral part we are seeing here the ventral part we are seeing here and it is it, it has uh, fixed this prey with the help of these tube feet see and this part shows let me magnify zoom it in a little bit here you see this is the cardiac stomach part which is everted out it is showing the everted out cardiac stomach part and then retraction is back it's retraction back into this here it is retracted back so it can be everted and retracted let's get back to this so these structures help in eversion that is uh, um, contraction of body muscles and uh, consequent pressure of coelomic fluid causing everting out of the cardiac stomach and retraction is brought about by the contraction of these uh, 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 retractor muscles all the time students they join during the class that is kind of disturbing anyway so oh, pyloric part so we talked about cardiac stomach in our previous slides and here in the next slide we have seen how the cardiac stomach is everted out once the prey is captured here with the help of tube feet and it's uh, in case of bivalve there are shells hard shells the soft body is located inside that and shells are shut so it just uh, with the help of the suckers on the tube feet it pries open the uh, shell and uh, everts out its stomach uh, or the like stomach between the shells and uh, yes feed on the content we'll come back to that part so the pyloric stomach next so cardiac stomach leads through this narrow constriction into pyloric stomach it is a small flat pentagonal sac here you see in this figure we we see this is a pentagonal sac clearly pentagonal you see in this part and it opens aborally into intestine angles of pentagon lies along the radii here angles are lying there along the radii and uh, each receives a duct here called as pyloric duct from the corresponding pyloric cecum or the digestive gland so here these are the glands associated with the pyloric stomach let's talk about these glands so each arm contains a pair of digestive glands extending up to the tip so from the central disc part uh, from where the arms start up to the tip of arm these glands are uh, extended each is suspended from a boral body by mesentries so um, there is a figure i will just search that and show how it is suspended so each 
is each gland is suspended from a boral body by mesenteries each of these glands has a hollow longitudinal axis from which arise two series of short lateral hollow branches that terminate into bladder like lobules Uh, the hollow axis of two pyloric ceca of an arm open into a common pyloric dip that leads into pyloric stoma so let's get back to the figure where we see these structures here we were talking about these two these two like hollow duct like structures and then joining and forming this common uh, pyloric duct and then there are small branches which lead into these uh, pyloric ceca here and the secretions from them they are poured through these branches into this and then finally into this and into the uh, pyloric stomach part um, students are advised to join the class in time because all the time they disturb by uh, requesting to join so all of you are advised to join within 5 to 10 minutes of uh, the class you see i start class at 10 so there is enough time time for joining between 9:50 and 10 it is very disturbing and this is very much i was talking about pyloric stoma so pyloric ceca and digestive glands so these glands extend in each arm they extend up to the tip there are pouches like structures having a smaller branches which join and form a, a, a separate longitudinal branches which open into a common pyloric duct now regarding the fine structure the epi, the, the epithelial lining of pyloric ceca that consists of four types of flagellated columnar cells what are these uh, these cells number one the secretory cells or granular cells which are involved with secretion of proteolytic enzyme amylolytic enzymes and lipolytic enzymes see all major nutrient digesting enzymes are secreted by these secretory or glan granular cells so Uh, proteolytic for protein digestion amylolytic for the complex carbohydrate digestion and lipolytic for the lipid digestion also there are mucus cells of course which are involved with the secretion of mucus thirdly the storage cells these cells store the reserve food such as lipid glycogen and protein polysaccharide complex so there are storage cells located and the flagellate cells these are are actually the current producing cell not the electric current but the direction of flow so they maintain a steady flow of enzymes toward the stomach so flagellated cells are present in different rows so one row of cells maintain the steady flow of enzymes from the gland towards the stomach and the opposite flow is when the digested food moves towards the pyloric ceca so there are flagellated cells present that maintain the current for the flow of uh, uh, substances so this this is the fine composition tissue composition of the pyloric or digestive glands see four types of cells are there one for secretion for gland for the enzymes second for the secretion of mucus cells third are the storage cells which store the digested food and the flagellate cells they are uh, the current producing cells now in this slide we see the dissection of this uh, sea star it is cut open and uh, it is uh, it is uh, flipped up and here we see these uh, digestive glands here these are the digestive glands they these two sets they uh, extend from the central disc up to that tip portion now next part uh, this uh, pyloric stomach that uh, leads into intestine which is a short five sided tube extend vertically to the aboral surface 
and here it opens out by an anus also this gives out and this time gives out two or more small branched appendages right which are called as intestinal ceca or rectal ceca at the interradial position right at the interradial between two radii between two arms there are these small branched appendages called as rectal ceca or intestinal ceca they secrete a brownish fluid which is probably excretory in nature because this path leads to exterior so uh, the 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 fluid which is absorbed uh, which is of uh, uh, excretory nature that is uh, secreted excreted out uh, through this uh, rectal part and lastly the anus uh, the part of intestine after ceca is called rectum this again is a very short tube this part after the ceca after the ceca after the rectal ceca is called as rectum anus is a small rounded aperture it is placed eccentrically right slightly away from the center on the aboral surface of central disc on the aboral surface of the central disc that is on the dorsal surface so this is how a small intestine runs small uh, digestive tract runs from mouth to anus located within the central disc which is kind of flattened disc and the glands are spread out in all four five arms next is uh, uh, the digestion absorption and the food and feeding uh, of this so sea star is a voracious carnivore voracious feeder and it is carnivorous of, of carnivorous nature it preys upon sedentary marine animals such as clams and oysters and mussels and uh, snails crabs also it feeds on other small star fishes also small fishes and injured and dead animals as well Uh, but generally it is a it is a carnivore it preys upon these uh, these uh, small marine animals such as clams and oysters and mussels and snails and crabs etc and uh, the spray is captured and held in position by arms and tube feet as we have seen in some previous picture it is captured and held in position that is in front of mouth held in position by arms and tube feet in case of bivalves okay bivalve kya hote mollusk hote hain it in case of bivalves it attaches its arms and tube feet on the two valves and apply this pulling force it pulls open the shell and diverts its cardiac stomach into mantle cavity and pours in the enzymes and digests outside the body digests its prey content outside partly digest that partly digest the soft tissue and then ingest further digestion occurs in the alimentary canal uh, in the uh, inside the body of the sea star so when the cardiac stomach is diverted out over the captured prey secretions of stomach and pyloric ceci are poured over it protease amylase and lipase digest uh, uh, proteins carbohydrates and lipids respectively part digestion occurs outside the body then cardiac muscle is retracted uh, that means it it takes in the this partly digested food through mouth and it is retracted further digestion occurs inside the body some intracellular digestion also occurs in the cells of pyloric ceca uh, and then the digested food is absorbed in the pyloric ceca the and this digested food is distributed via the coelomic fluid so from the cecum it is absorbed into the uh, coelomic fluid and uh, then uh, it is circulated through that coelomic fluid excess food is stored in storage cells of pyloric ceca we talked about these storage cells in our previous slide where we talked about the histological um arrangement uh, uh, here in the pyloric ceca so excess food is stored in the storage cells of pyloric ceca 
the absorption is more or less completed in the pyloric cecum and so it doesn't require a long intestine very little undigested material uh, is ejected out via the anus so this is how the feeding digestion absorption and ejection occurs a small digestive tract we have seen each and every component of digestive tract in some more detail rest of it you can go through the books and uh, you just study about uh, the digestive system and uh, when this unit ends we will be discussing uh, various topics uh, if there is any problem you can discuss uh, uh, once this unit is done so we have set aside that time for the discussion purpose so but before starting discussion you need to go through these uh, different systems uh, from book in detail so this is to introduce to you various systems i hope it was understandable it was simple enough to understand and uh, you could see clearly all these organs that i have just uh, explained to you with this i end the class here it was a relatively smaller system our next uh, system uh, will be uh, that water vascular system which is a more elaborate system and uh, i advise you to please join the class within first 10 minutes that is up to 10 o'clock please join the class right and then um, in our next class in next 45 minutes we'll be talking about water vascular system in detail so that is all for today thank you very much Hello